Hey everybody, Sean here. And yes, if you need deliverance from a demon as a born again believer in Christ, then your quote unquote sister in Christ, Apostle Catherine Crick and Prophet Sean Boltz are willing to cast out those nasty demons for only $25. And that, my friends, is all you need to see to know that these are a couple of the greedy people we've been warned of in Scripture. What happened to Matthew 10:8? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So whether it's paying for a healing school, learning how to raise the dead, or deliverance and driving out demons, if you see people charging for this, then run for the hills. But if for some reason you do decide to pay for your impartation and freedom, it's in pesos on this page, but US dollars on this one, with that $25 access, you'll receive help in many areas of your life that you may be stuck in. Like not seeing the fruit of the Spirit manifesting in areas of your life. Generational sin. Receiving deliverance from those demons living inside your Holy Spirit indwelt body. Or you can even learn how to minister deliverance to others. Deliverance was not a topic in the Bible that was taught, and especially not for a price. And the devil has tricked people into thinking this is some complicated practice when all we saw in the Bible was people telling the unclean spirits to leave in the name of Jesus, and they did. If you want to raise the dead, then pray and say, be alive in the name of Jesus Christ. And if it's God's will, that person will live. If you want to pray for healing, then with faith, say, be healed in Jesus' name. And if it's God's will, that person will be healed. I've seen many people instantly healed, and I've also prayed and seen many not healed. Why God heals some and not others, only He knows. The key to this, though, is faith and realizing that God's Holy Spirit is in us. And whether God's given you an actual spiritual gift or you're just being used by God in a moment when you speak out in faith, it all comes back to showing just how amazing our Lord really is. And He alone gets the glory. So with that being said, we're going to finish off with a video I did two years ago and what having the faith of a mustard seed really means. First, I want to look at the words faith and belief. Is there a difference? Well, for the most part, no. We can often use either of these words in many situations. The Gospel of John was written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of John does not even use the word faith, although the concept of faith is throughout John. And for the most part in Scripture, there is no distinction between faith and belief. In modern usage, belief often refers to mental agreement and faith refers to wholehearted commitment. In my testimony video, this can be explained as intellectual faith and saving faith. My uncle was a pastor when he was alive and he told me a story once that I'll never forget. It was about a man named Bodin. He used to string a tightrope across Niagara Falls and do a show for people. So one day he was doing his thing and just finished walking the tightrope there and back and the crowd was cheering and he said, now who thinks I can do this while pushing a wheelbarrow? Well, the crowd cheered louder so he did his thing again and when he got back he asked, now who thinks I can do it with someone in the wheelbarrow? Well, that was it. The crowd went hysterical. So he looked at one of the most enthusiastic people and said, You, sir, hop in the wheelbarrow. The man looked at him and said, Me? No way! Now, my uncle explained that there are two kinds of faith. An intellectual faith that says, I believe with our minds, and a saving faith that says, I believe so much that I'm willing to put my life in God's hands and let Him direct my actions. Jesus died for us so that we could live for him, not just acknowledge him with our intellect and go through the motions. Another way of looking at it is, faith is putting belief into action. In James 2.19 it says, you believe there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. 
The demons believe that God exists, and they may even know more about God than people do, but they do not have faith in him. Unfortunately, many people in the church have the same kind of belief that the demons have, but it's not sufficient for their salvation. So how much faith is the faith of a mustard seed? In this following illustration that I got from gotquestions.org, tell me who has the most faith. Three people board a commercial airliner to travel to a distant city. The first is an engineer who designs and builds airplanes. He is also a pilot. He knows how everything works. Furthermore, he is a personal friend of the pilot who will be flying that afternoon, and he knows him to be very competent. He boards the plane with full confidence. The second person is just an average traveler. He knows a little bit about airplanes, but doesn't think too much about it. He takes his seat and starts to read a magazine. The third person is deathly afraid of flying. He breaks out into a cold sweat, and it takes everything in him not to turn and flee down the gangway. But with much fear and trembling, he gets on the plane, sits down, and just hopes he can fall asleep and not wake up until they land. So, the question is, which person has the most faith in this plane? The answer is, they all have the same amount of faith. All of them have boarded the plane and committed their safety to the plane and the crew. All the people who got on the plane were committing themselves to the plane. They believed or had faith in the plane and the pilot. Those who stayed at the airport, even if they did have complete confidence and believed that the plane would arrive as scheduled, did not exercise faith in the plane, nor did they commit themselves to it. So for the most part, Faith and belief are used interchangeably in the Bible. Now in context to Matthew 17:20, how much faith is the faith of a mustard seed? And you'll notice that some translations call it faith and some call it belief, which is another great example of the words both being considered equal. Yet the Greek shows it as faith. So how much? Really, it comes down to do you believe or not? You either believe signs and gifts are still active, or you don't. You either believe God is real, or you don't. You can't say, I believe in God more than you do. The fruit in your life will be a testimony of whether you have truly committed faith to God or an actual intellectual belief in God. In Matthew, Jesus was explaining that they didn't have the faith to cast out that demon. Maybe this situation spooked the disciples, and in their minds they thought, whoa, this is a bad one, and they doubted that the demon would actually leave. They prayed, but their doubt turned their faith into hope, and I think that's a problem with many people's faith today. They pray, and they just hope God will answer, and that's okay at times, but the fact is they don't fully believe God's promises in certain areas yet. But if we truly believe, the Bible is clear that God will use us for amazing things as illustrated with the metaphor of moving mountains. So what's the point of all this? In this next part, I really want to encourage you and share a bit of my journey with you in putting an intellectual faith into action. And for my cessationist brothers and sisters out there, I just ask to please have an open mind and look at scripture with this and realize that we can agree to disagree on this topic and still fight the good fight together, exposing false teachers that are deceiving people. But when Jesus said in Matthew 17 that nothing will be impossible, I looked up the word nothing in the Greek and it means nothing will be impossible. And Jesus echoes this in Mark 9, 23, when he says, all things are possible. And in the Greek, all things mean anything, everything, every kind of thing. I mean, this is really exciting stuff. Sometimes I think we forget that the creator of the universe lives in us and wants to use us for his glory in many ways. So, I remember as a young Christian, I would see Todd White videos and think, wow, this guy is amazing. God gave him the gift of healing and he just hangs out in the streets healing people and telling them about Jesus. Unfortunately, many have thought the same and are yet to realize he's a false teacher and his goofy leg tricks are a sham. But at that time, it was pretty cool. Years later, I was reading John 9, 2-3 that says, And his disciples asked him, 
Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God would be displayed in him. And then Jesus healed him. It was a God-given light bulb moment. I thought, so some people are born with disabilities so that we as Christians can not only preach the gospel to them, but they can experience God's love through healing? And I started really studying this in the Bible. I made this comment on a Facebook page, and a friend shared videos from <clears throat> Torben Sondergaard. But I would spend hours watching his videos and other videos from Todd White. Of course, they focused on Mark 16 that says, These signs will follow believers. And I believed. Why? Because that's what the Bible says, and God doesn't lie. It says these signs will follow believers. It wasn't till a couple of months later that God showed me the errors of what they teach, one being that all believers can do all those things. But as we know from Scripture, we don't have all the same gifts, so wrong. Not all have the gift of healing, but can God use someone when they step out in faith to pray for someone? Of course, even if it's only one time. It's not necessarily about feeling led by God to pray for someone, although that happens as well. It's about stepping out in faith from your belief in what God has told us in his words. These signs will follow those who believe. Which signs will follow each believer? Only God knows. But how will anyone find out unless they step out in faith when a situation presents itself? At that time, I believed wholeheartedly, especially from the light bulb moment God gave me of Jesus healing the blind man. Long story short, I stepped out in faith and started praying for people to be healed and have seen Jesus heal hundreds of people instantly. There's video testimonies in some of my other videos from people I still work with today that I know were not just short-term placebo healings. I'm talking deaf ears opening, eyesight restored, sprained ankles, arthritis, a stroke victim in a wheelchair, and many more. We started going to hospitals to pray for people and share the gospel and have seen Jesus heal many. Even saw a black finger ready for amputation regaining color. God is amazing. But the most important thing is sharing the gospel. Gospel tracts are so important. It doesn't matter if you give a hungry person food. If they don't know Jesus when they die, they may have a full stomach but will still go to hell. You can put clothes on the homeless, but if they die without Christ, they may feel warmer, but it's going to get a lot warmer for them. Has everyone been healed that we've prayed for? No. Why? I don't know. God's ways are his own. I'm thankful that some were and they got to hear the truth about Jesus and the cross. So how much faith is the faith of a mustard seed? You either believe or you don't. Do you believe God speaking through Paul when he said we all have different gifts in the body? And do you believe God speaking through Mark when he says these signs will follow believers? If you do believe scripture, that's step one. Now, put that faith into action the next time God presents you with an opportunity. I don't support these false teachers because they have schools learning gifts, they promote being drunk and out of control in the spirit, they preach a gospel of love without acknowledgement of what sin is and why we need to repent, people like Torben teach that baptism is part of salvation and that a newly saved believer will have demons cast out of them while he babbles in false tongues over them, and the list of junk these people teach is an embarrassment to the body of Christ. But I do believe what the Bible says and want to encourage everybody to have that faith of a mustard seed and believe what is written in the Bible and that all things are possible for those who believe. So until next time, take care and God bless.